So this is a, a model of what the Cascadia subduction zone, the next earthquake, might look like and the possibility we may be able to provide some early warning of strong ground motion before it reaches the urban areas. And in this scenario, you know, we're looking at probably the rupture will come as close as 150, 200 kilometers from Seattle, a bit closer to Portland. And the Cascadia subduction zone stretches all the way from Cape Mendocino, California, up into British Columbia. So it's a very long rupture. So there could be as long as five, perhaps even six minutes of ground shaking, uh, or, or the rupture will take that long to progress all the way. Um, if the origin occurred now, then within a minute, our, we could detect that, know it's a big earthquake, know it's on the subduction zone, and generate a warning, say to close the Alaska Way viaduct or uh, mm -hmm. any number of things may happen. Um, that's not our end of it, uh, but we're hoping to, in the not too distant future, be able to give this kind of early warning of an earthquake occurring. So just walk me through, like right now you're seeing this and this, what would happen in real time here? What would this? Well, this is, this is an attempt to be at real time. This circle is the P wave or primary wave, which is like sound traveling through the ground. The red circle is the shear waves generated by the earthquake and that's what really gets us rocking back and forth. So at this point of the earthquake, only part of it has progressed, we could be issuing a warning when the P waves haven't even reached Portland yet. So the, the shaking won't get intense in the Seattle area for another two minutes or so. So we're, we're going to be able to begin to give warning. Now of this five to six minutes of rupture, the strong ground motion in Seattle would probably be limited to about two and a half minutes of really strong ground motion, although we could perceive it much longer. And again, this is an idea that could happen now, that you could have a two, right. three or four minute warning. Well, we're not set up at this point yet to alarm on this. So it, it's something that technologically is feasible. We have the network to do it, but there needs to be a bit more software development and testing before we have an operational warning system. And this is an assumption that the, uh, this particular quake would occur, obviously, a couple hundred miles south. Right, that, well, and that's the ideal. But uh -huh. even if it began off of Nia Bay, there, there still could be time to provide, you know, 30 seconds warning. Um, so I'm, we, we still have an opportunity to provide early warning uh, when this system is developed, but uh, this is the best case scenario if it starts in the south.